I'm Lindsay Gilbert, and I am the Assistant Director of Professional and Career Development Services at Drake University, serving the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. I hate to do this to my mother, but my mother's 60th birthday, we all flew to San Antonio, Texas for her birthday. And we flew, when I got off the plane, I just kind of didn't quite feel right. Like it, that just, I, I don't know, it was our first big girls trip since I'd had children. It was our, my first big girls trip with my sister since we'd all had kids. And it was a big celebration for my mom's birthday. Um, that night we also ate in one of those dinner, those rotating restaurants. And ever since then we were walking around by the river walk and I just kept saying, I feel like I'm on that boat. And about 10 days later, I ended up in um, an emergency room situation where I just couldn't even stand up. And that's where they put me through an MRI and um, a lot of other testing to try to figure out what was going on. And I ended up uh, with a neurologist here in Des Moines who was able to diagnose me with multi-debarkment. Most um, individuals actually, it, it can take up to 10 years to receive this kind of a diagnosis because it impacts only one in 800,000 people. So I am one of three people in the state of Iowa who I know of who have this disorder. And I best like to explain it to people as if, if you've ever ridden on a boat, when you're getting off that boat and you kind of have your, can't find your sea legs, you still feel kind of like you're in a little bit in motion, that is mal de debarquement. I have this syndrome, which means that my brain never reset itself. So my brain is constantly telling me that I'm on boat, on a boat or in motion. And so I have my brain and my body compensate for that. So it impacts me quite a bit um, in ways, a multitude of ways. Uh, the biggest one for me um, would be brain fog. Um, the symptoms can actually almost appear as if I'm intoxicated. So I like to kind of tease with my students that if I was ever pulled over for an actual sobriety, field sobriety test, I would fail it immediately. My balance level is an absolute zero. So if you ask me to stand up with my feet together, I would immediately collapse and fall over. I have no balance and no ability to maintain that type of balance standing up. Um, in addition to that, I get headaches. Um, so I'm on special medication or injections to help with my migraines um, because of how that works. My head also kind of is in constant motion, which has tightened my muscles and um, pulled up the muscles in my back. My gait has changed, so if you ever see me walking, one of the things you'll notice is that I actually maintain more of like a tripod stance. So I actually keep my legs separated to kind of stabilize myself. Um, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned, the brain fog, so I'm gonna be recalling that again. From there, I actually developed another disorder called thoracic outlet syndrome. And because when I was talking about those muscles in my neck, pulling up on my, on my trapezoids in my back. It's actually collapsing my clavicle and my top rib, so the ribs up here. And by doing that, it's, it's collapsing on my veins and arteries. So I'm losing blood flow and oxygen, blood flow to my brain. And that will cause me to pass out and um, also cause me to get dizzy. Um, causes, like I lose feeling, I really don't have a lot of feeling in my arms and hands. At this point, I really struggle to like open jars. Um, even your gas tank, it's little things like that that I really struggle to do because I just don't have a lot of grasp with my hands. Um, I did have surgery this past spring um, to remove the top ribs up here um, on both sides. They did a bilat bilateral rib resection as they call it. So I have my little teeny tiny rib. I should have brought it in to show you guys because it's hilarious. But I have a teeny tiny top rib and um, they also removed like my pec muscles, stretched those out. They tried to do some work with my uh, trap muscles. And then they, what I call roto rooted my um, nerves because I have a lot of pain in my nerves because of the damage that's been caused by the constriction. Um, you know, the, there's also a lot of um, mental health with this. There's, you know, I've fallen into bouts of depression. Um, I have moments of anxiety, especially when mine was, my experience was flight induced. So for example, getting on a plane is really traumatic for me. Someone struggling and knowing that they're not really okay, um, that's okay. And to be there and be the one to be there for them would be, is, is really important to me. No, I just think it's a good reminder that we talk about it a lot, we say it a lot, that you know, you never know what journey someone else is on until you talk to them. And so be kind, um, be respectful to one another, uh, treat each other with the love and respect that we all deserve. My body will, de this is sorry, I'm gonna need a, a Kleenex. My body will deteriorate, that's gonna happen. And um, so for example, um, my back and my hips like are really, problematic so I know I'll have issues with that um, the concern right now is my hands I don't like I said I don't have a lot of grasp from this other disorder um, so what use I'll have of my arms and my hands later on in life um, is questionable um, you know I, be, I was 
told by a doctor, one of the very first doctors I ever saw, that there's nothing we can do for you, get a cane and learn how to walk with it, or a walker. And I refuse to do that. I'm 40 years old and I'm not walking with a walker at this point in my life, but that is my reality, that someday I will. And I'm okay with it. So I'm gonna just live the best life I can until that point and um, embrace every single second of every minute of every day and just love on all my people and work my dream job and love my family and do everything I can to make the best of it until that day comes.